While Carl Schuler was introduced to race walking early, it wasn't until he attended Frostburg State College that Schuler became dedicated to the sport. Schuler trained for the NAIA Indoor Nationals and in February of 1976 finished second behind Jim Hiron. Deciding to focus his energies on the Olympic trials, in January 1980, Schuler arranged to work four hour days and train the remainder of the time. His efforts paid off and he won the Olympic trials in an impressive time of 3.59.33. Unfortunately, his efforts were not rewarded as the U.S. boycott of the Olympic Games. After the trials, Schuler entered into one of his many retirements from the sport, but was lured back in 1983 and joined the growing colony of walkers at the U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado. The training center environment proved beneficial to Schuler, and going into the 1984 trials, he was the man to beat. Unfortunately, he became dehydrated and had to hang on for third place. At the Olympic Games, Schuler showed why he was the favorite at the trials. Under very hot conditions, competitors kept dropping out around him. It was a war of attrition. As the race went on, hopes rose for an American medal, but Schuler finished sixth, just two minutes away from fourth place. After another brief retirement, Schuler returned again. And as the 1988 Olympic trials approached, Schuler turned up the effort. He returned to working part-time, this time six-hour days. This break from work was enough to get him in a very strong shape. He won the trials, but at the Olympics, he didn't place as well as he did in the previous games. The combination of international race walkers getting faster, the addition of the returning walkers from the 1984 games boycott, and a respiratory problem led Schuler to finish 23rd. After 1988, Schuler returned permanently to work in full-time. In late 1989, he was hit by a car and seriously injured. He took some time getting back in form and in 1991 qualified for the World Championships. After completing all of the approximately 40-50 Ks of his career, Schuler DNF'd for the first time. In 1992, he gave the Olympics one last attempt. Although he was working full-time, he was able to break the four-hour barrier and win the Olympic trials. At the Olympics, he finished a disappointing 23rd once again and knew his career had peaked. Still, Schuler couldn't let race walking leave his life. He returned and competed in a few more World Cup teams before finally calling it quits in 1997. Motivated by watching Larry Young walk to the bronze medal in the 1968 50K Olympic Games, Jim Hiring decided to give race walking a whirl at the Wisconsin Junior Olympics. While his first attempt led to a disqualification, it was not long before Hiring mastered the rules of race walking. Hiring walked for the University of Wisconsin Parkside and very quickly moved through the race walking ranks. In 1976, when Hiring was a junior at college, he competed at the Olympic Trials, finishing fifth. Hiring dedicated himself to walking full time, and his dedication paid off in his senior year, winning both the indoor and outdoors NAIA championships. Hiring spent the following few years frustrated, battling injuries, but it all came together in the 1980 Olympic Trials where Jim Hiring and Marco Maniak tied for first place. Qualifying but not competing in the Olympics due to the boycott was one of the biggest disappointments of Hiring's life. Hiring continued to train, but this time he had the support in the form of the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. By 1984, Hiring was again at the tops of the Olympic trials. Leading by a mile and a half at the 10K, Hiring was well on his way to winning his second Olympic trials. But knee problems that had plagued his career flared up, Hiring relinquished his lead, but not his birth on the Olympic team. In 1988, when Hiring competed in his fourth Olympic trial, he figured he would just walk his own race. He raced as hard as he could, as long as he could. But the third place finisher was disqualified, and Hiring qualified for the Olympics again. As soon as he crossed the line in Seoul, he retired. Hiring just didn't see the sense in racing anymore. Aside from his many accomplishments outdoors, Hiring also at one point held the world record at 1,500 meters, the one mile and two mile events. Distance great Marco Avaniak actually started his athletic career as a high school sprinter, but he was hooked on the sport after being introduced to it by two Centurion walkers. Avaniak quickly became a serious athlete, training and in no time at all was racing distances, long distances. In 1977, Avaniak finished second at the 100K National Championships. While an accomplishment in its own right, a true master of the sport needed to succeed at the Olympic distances of 20 and 50K. His breakthrough came in 1978 when he finished fifth at the U.S. 20K Nationals and qualified for his first international race, Swedish Walk Week. 
The international experience helped Ivaniac mature as a competitor. Placing at Nationals provided little challenge for the upstart. The very first time he raced at the 50K Nationals, he won. By the end of the 1970s, Ivaniac knew that he had made it and could compete with the best in the U.S. Late in the race at the 1980 Olympic Trials, he was dueling it out with Jimmy Hiring. Entering the stadium together with nothing truly on the line due to the Olympic boycott, they decided to finish in a tie. En route to the next Olympics, the World Championships in Helsinki furthered Ivaniak's fortitude. Finishing ninth against the world's top walkers, and under very hot conditions, his confidence rose to an all-time high. By the time he became a resident at the Olympic Training Center in 1983, Ivaniak was at the top of his game. His goal was no less than meddling at the 1984 Olympic Games. Ivaniak won the Olympic trial races in an impressive way. With a press of heat each day, Ivaniak set the stage with a 10-minute victory at the 50K. At first, it looked like the double triumph was out of the question. However, after Jimmy Hiring built up a huge lead, his knee problems forced him to fade. Ivaniak not only won the 20K, but set an Olympic trials 20K record that stood until the year 2000. At the Olympics, the conditions were hot, but Ivaniak liked it hot. He finished seventh in the 20K. However, being a 50K specialist, he wondered if he should have competed in the shorter race. He had only one week to recover before the 50K event. After the 20K, he felt unable to regain his focus and dropped out of the race. He recalls that he just couldn't get it going again. Typical of a post-Olympic year, 1985 was a downtime for Vanya, but at the start of 1986, he began a multi-year training cycle with the aim of taking another shot at an Olympic medal. At the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, he set a new American record. Unfortunately, the plans for his international competitors also succeeded. With race walkers across the world growing faster, Vaniak finished further down in the pack. By his third Olympic Games in 1992, one might have expected him to have the routine down. However, although he trained well leading up to the race, Vaniak just couldn't get moving and dropped out of the race, his last Olympic experience. Tim Lewis defined race walking in America during the 1980s. To date, he still has four of the top five 20K times ever raced. Like many walkers of his era, Lewis started race walking as part of the New York High School program. Originally a runner, Lewis saw another guy race walking on the high school team, thought it looked easy, so decided to give it a try. Lewis went to college at the University of Colorado and had the benefit of the nearby U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Training with the top U.S. walkers of his day, Lewis got an early introduction into the elite race walking world. Once out of college, Lewis combined a full-time job with Digital Corporation and his training. Having to fit training into his career, Lewis accomplished amazing feats. For years, Lewis dominated American race walking at distances from 1,500 meters to 20K. In the mid-1980s, the indoor track circuit was commonly raced, and Lewis held the world records for the indoor 1,500 meters and one-mile race walks. Lewis did not fare quite as well at his sole Olympic appearance in 1988. He had a bad race and finished second to last. Partially retiring in 1992 and finally calling it quits in 93, Lewis just didn't find the joy in competing anymore. Still residing in Colorado Springs, Lewis now works for Oracle. He no longer competes in athletics, but runs to keep from getting fat, plays a little soccer, snowboards, skis, and camps for fun.